Looking to level up on YouTube? Well, in this video, you're gonna learn eight secret keyword finding methods to get more views. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly which method aligns best with your content. And I must say, method number six is an absolute game changer. Let's get into the content. All right, so before we get into those eight methods, I wanna share with you three very important things that you need to know when it comes to keyword research. All right, so the first one is, you need to understand who the person is that you're trying to attract. Because if you don't understand a person, it makes this become a headache. I'm not, I'm not even going to lie to you. You want to make keyword research easy. And the way that you do this is you understand that person. One of the easiest ways to do this is to look back at everything that you had to accomplish to get to where you are now. There's a 90% chance that they're going to run into those same struggles. So if you create your content and base it around those things, you're going to attract the right type of person. All right. All right. Now, the second thing is you need to understand search intent. So what is search intent? So let's say for instance that somebody is searching online for a hammer or they're searching online for like a drill or something like that. They don't really want the hammer or the drill. The thing that they really want is the hole in whatever it is that they're trying to put the hole in, right? So that's what I mean when I'm talking about the intent. They're not searching for those things unless they have something that they need to do. Okay, so that's very, very important. So just keep that in mind as we go throughout this video. Now, another thing, questions that they have. Now, one of the things that I always recommend people do, if you're trying to attract a certain person, then you need to understand the questions that this person would actually ask. And if we go back to what I gave you a tip on earlier, is just making it the person you used to be, you're gonna understand those questions. And then now you have a list of video topics that you can go out and do research on and then gather up some more video ideas, which is a very, very powerful method. All right. So number one, understand the person. Number two, understand the questions that they have. And then number three, you need to understand the search intent. Like why are they searching that specific thing? All right. So now we're going to get into these eight methods, which I believe that are going to change the game for you when it comes to keyword research. All right, so with keyword research method number one, we're gonna focus on the basics because the basics are important before you can get to the advanced keyword research strategies, which are gonna reveal some of these hidden keywords, all right? So one of the first things I do when I'm doing keyword research is I type in a C keyword. So a C keyword is where you put in whatever niche that you in, all right? So for example, if I'm in affiliate marketing, I'm gonna put affiliate marketing in the search box, or if I'm in gardening, I'm gonna put gardening, or if I'm in interior design, and I want to attract those type of people, I'm going to put that in there because I want to see what's most important to them. So let's go and roll with interior design. So when I put in interior design in, you can see it says interior design ideas, interior design course, uh, design living room, interior design Minecraft, and so on and so on, right? These are what people care about, right? But what this is, is this is the basic keyword research. It's not really revealing a lot of the different things that a person really wants to know, right? So we got to go a little bit more um, specific. So how do we do that? We go to the next method, which is the modifier method. All right. So the modifier method is let's say, for instance, I add a four on the end of that. So now it's going to get more specific. So you can see right here, it says interior design for bedroom, interior design for beginners, interior design for a small house. You see how it's getting more specific. So now let's say, for instance, I take away the four and I put a two there. So now it says interior design to make a room look bigger. That's very specific specific and then to UX design to sell your house. So you see it's, it's allowing us to do that, which is cool. Now let's say for instance, I want to find even more keywords, right? We still on the modified method, which is the second method, but there's really three parts. And the first part that I just showed you was actually the after. So what you're doing is you're looking at your C keyword and then you put an after you put in a modifier, but you can also put a modifier in front of your C keyword. And you can also put a modifier in between your C keyword. Keywords. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I come here and I put an underscore space and then in front of this underscore, what I do is I put a letter. So I start with the alphabet. I can go A, B, C all the way to Z. So you can see what it did is it put an A in front of everything that start that has interior design in it. So we got AI interior design, apartment interior design, then art deco interior design. Now, if I change this to a B, bedroom interior design, best interior design house, 
bathroom interior design ideas. And then you can kind of get the point of what's happening here. It starts with whatever letter you type and then it has interior design in it. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the middle method. And like I said, this is all still part of method number two. And I'm gonna go with something like how to, and then I'm gonna do underscore, and then I'm gonna hit space, and then I'm gonna put something like basketball. All right, so now what it's gonna do is it's gonna, it's gonna look at everything, every modifier I put in the middle of how to, and basketball. Let me show you how that works. So I'm gonna come back to this modifier right in front of this underscore. I'm gonna put A. All right, so now you can see it says how to, and then it starts with an A, ankle break in basketball, how to accurately shoot a basketball, how to lay up in basketball. So you see what's happening here. And then the same thing, if I put a B, how to break ankles, how to be good at basketball. If I put a C, same concept. Let me actually bring it back. There it is. How to create space in basketball. So these are all the things that are gonna be important for somebody that's typing those things in. All right, so that's the before method, middle method, and the after method. These are all modifiers, which is the second method. Now, method number three is where we do the query infinity method, all right? So the way that this works is very simple. So what I could do is, let's just go ahead and go with how to do TikTok. Let's just roll with that for now. Okay, so how to do TikTok videos. Let's roll with this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep getting deeper into that topic. So right now we're in the query called how to do TikTok videos. YouTube understands this, but if I click in this box, it's going to give me more relevant stuff, how to make a TikTok video with pictures. So somebody type in how to do TikTok videos, they might want to know about how to make a TikTok video with pictures and then how to make TikTok video edits or a TikTok tutorial transition. Those are going to be things that are important to them. Now let's go ahead and click into this. And then if I click back into this box again, you see what it does, how to switch to photo mode on TikTok. That might be important to somebody who's doing that. All right, so let me show you another example. So let's go back to interior design. So if I go to interior design and I roll with like this first one right here, which is interior design ideas, if I click back in this box again, as you can see, interior design ideas, India, or modern interior design, or interior design tips, or interior design ideas for a living room. So you see how everything that you put in here and you actually hit the search button, it's always gonna make sure whatever you see here, it's always going to be related to what you already went deeper into. YouTube understands this. So it doesn't matter if I click on this one, I'm going to be able to go deeper with this one. So if I click here, boom, small apartment living room design ideas. You see how specific that is? And then small living room layout ideas. So this can go into infinity. That's why I call it the query infinity method. All right, now method number four. Now method number four is basically where you go on Google and you can do those first three methods that I just taught you the same way you can do them on YouTube. So let me actually show you real quick. So if I go over here to Google, and I type how to, and then I hit underscore, and then I do that basketball thing again, boom, I can do it over here and I can put an A right here and you can see how to be the best at basketball, how to pick and roll in basketball. So the good thing about doing this on Google is that not only do YouTube videos rank on YouTube, they also rank on Google themselves because Google owns YouTube. So now you're able to get traffic from both of the platforms, which are two of the biggest search engines we got out here, right? So that's the benefit of actually using this on YouTube and Google. So that's method number four. So method number four, five, which we actually about to get into is you want to take the YouTube keyword that you make the decision on going with, and you want to put that keyword over here on Google. So this is called a Google paste method. So if I go over here and I say, let's just say that uh, the keyword is how to get more views on YouTube. What I would do is I would put that in hit enter. And then what I'm looking for over here is I want to look at what are the questions that people are also asking. All right. So if I go down here and I scroll down, you can see right here, it says people also ask, how can I increase my YouTube views? Why my YouTube video is not getting views? Does rewatching a YouTube video count as a view? These are things that people want to know, right? How much YouTube pays for a thousand views? And what I love about the people also ask session is if I click right here and then I close it, it just opened up to more. How can I increase my YouTube views fast for free? Can I watch my own video on YouTube to get 4,000 watch hours? And I can literally 
literally just keep opening these and it's going to keep showing me more and more. So some of these can actually be turned into video ideas themselves. So you got that section, but then what you also have right here where it says related searches, it shows me even more keywords. So how to grow a YouTube channel fast, how to promote YouTube channel for free, how to get more subscribers on YouTube. So you see it's showing me more. Now, what I was talking about earlier when I was showing you that you can rank YouTube videos, if you come right here, you can see there's a video section. So there's a video right here. Here's another video. Here's another video. So they're getting traffic from not only YouTube, but also on Google. So it shows you those three main things when you put your keyword over here so you can get that extra traffic. Now, I know you probably noticed that I have this uh, extension on, which is keywords everywhere. But over here, what they do is they actually show me the data on this. So if I click 30 days, it's going to show me what's happened in the last 30 days for that particular keyword. And then over here, you can see it shows me even more keywords because I have that installed. So keywords everywhere actually has an extension. Uh, it used to be completely free, but I think now it's like $10 to get a hundred thousand credits or something like that to allow you to actually see everything that I'm actually seeing right here. And like I said, this just gives me more and more ideas. Plus it gives me the search volume which is what you've been seeing throughout this entire video. Every time you see the search volume, that's what Keywords Everywhere allows me to do. All right, so now we're gonna go into method number six. And I love this one because it reveals things that you probably didn't even know about your space, all right? So let's actually go back to the main Google page. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in niche glossary, all right? It's called a glossary method. I love this one. So let's say, for instance, I'm doing gardening and I want a glossary terms that are about the space because you don't know everything, right? You got to learn these things. So what we could do is we can go to gardening terms glossary. You see it says terminology, right? So let's go through this and let's see, you know, some terms that, you know, because I'm not in the garden space, so I don't really know this stuff. But let's say that uh, I'm gonna try to find one that's related, like super related. Let's go with, uh, let's see here. So dead heading. I, I don't know what dead heading is, but let's actually go over here to YouTube and we just gonna paste that in there and let's see what happens. Look at this, dead heading petunias, dead heading flowers, dead heading geraniums. Let's actually go find another one. Let's put direct seed into YouTube and see if something comes up right there. If I come here, direct seed. So direct seed sowing, direct seed tomatoes, direct seed planting. So if you don't find like something like a glossary about your space, then you won't be able to know some of these things. So once you get it, you use it, you put it into YouTube and now it's going to reveal things that you didn't know. And then you can apply some of the methods that I already talked about, such as the Curie infinity method, click on some of this stuff and see what else is related to it. And it's really going to change the game for you. All right. So with this next method, which is method number seven, we're going to be going inside of our YouTube analytics. So what you want to do, come over here to the analytics analytics tab, open it up, and then it's going to open up and show you this. So once you get inside of here, what you want to do is you want to come right here to where it says see more and you want to click on that. Once this pops up, then you want to click right here to where it says traffic source. And then right down here, we want to click on the YouTube search hyperlink. And then as you can see, it's showing me all the keywords that people typed in to find my specific channel. Now, what I love that it does is it also shows you keywords that you show up for that you're not necessarily optimized for. So you might not even use it as a tag, but what YouTube has said is if you take that keyword and you put it into your tags, you can actually rank a lot higher for that particular keyword, which is going to drive you even more traffic than it's already been driving you. All right. So that's a little tool that you can actually use. Now, another tool you can use inside of analytic, which is method number eight is the research tab. So if I click right here, you can see it opens this up. Now, what I can do from here is I can come in here and I can look at all the keywords that my audience is searching for. So if I click your viewer searches and I come down here, you can see how to download music from YouTube. That's something that my audience was searching for. Uh, how to download YouTube video in a gallery. That's something else they want to know. Um, how to save YouTube videos to a camera roll. That's something they want to know. And if I go to, let's go to the next page. So if I go to the next page of this, it shows how to add a link to your YouTube description. So this is actually a content gap. So let me show you exactly what that means. So right here it says a content gap is a way of measuring what viewers are searching for and the results they find. So let me categorize it. So viewers can't find any results to their searches. Viewers can't find any exact match for their searches. And then viewers can't find relevant videos for their searches. For example, the content is old or low quality. So if something has been up for a very long time, but it's not relevant, then 
then you could create an update for that video and it's probably not a lot of people that have done that all right so that could be an example but as you can see here another one how to share your youtube channel link if you go to youtube right now you're going to see that i've created that exact video um this one right here youtube auto translate subtitles not working is also a content gap and i've also created that exact video and i think right now i'm actually ranking number one for that particular term so it's all about going in here and looking at what your audience is already searching for and then looking for content gaps that youtube gives you and the way that you just make it all content gaps is if you come here you click content gaps and then you hit apply and then boom it shows me even more video ideas so how to verify your youtube account i've done that exact video how to turn on comments on youtube i've done that exact video so it's all about using these tools as a way to keep finding keywords so that you never run out